pretty elaborated on this matter. But I'd like to try and refine the matter for your own convenience. So, if you smack me in the face with a slipper, everybody goes through this dark cavern, cavern in the afterlife. Everybody goes through this big dark cavern. Big dark cavern. Dante. Look into Dante. Check out. It's not Dante, sorry. I think Dante was the uh, artist. But anyway, look into this exiled man, this exiled Christian. I mean, look into the imagery and the artwork that he generated. My mum, my mum loved this. My wife finds stuff in my house. But um, Dante, anyway, you will all go through a cavern. Even our Lord Jesus Christ, he was mo he was most preferable, most preferable, and most condemned, and destroyed, and most destroyed. He, his reign goes from the top of a pyramid down to the bottom of the pyramid. An anti-pyramid. So there's no need for anything else. Like, there's no need for anything. It was, so that was perfect. It will never be as perfect. Like, you know, right here is an American. like, oh, Christianity is so boring. Everybody's been doing the same thing for like 50 years. It's like, oh, no. Anyway. Anyway, I'm going to talk. Find a few sailor men. Oh. So if you smack me in the face with a slipper, or your neighbour, you want to be careful. This is why the Decalogue recommends being nice to everybody. Because when times get better, this is going to get more saturated. And if you offend goodness, when goodness gets more saturated, then if you offend it. So in Ireland, there's lots of people with Down syndromes, Down syndrome in Ireland. And lots of people in Ireland are very important. They're very, they're very special people in Ireland. So in Ireland insult each other, insult themselves, their kids. Yes, their kids. Ramify, because they're special people. So this is why the Decalogue recommends. Be careful to every neighbour. Be careful. Be be very careful to every neighbour. Do not disrespect or rob any neighbour. Because you never know. Like in these times when there's only me, you don't mess with me or trespass on me in any way. But in better times when there's fifty stars and the American flag is full and flying, you want to be very careful, man. Nearly every neighbour you might offend will have a massive ramification. They're better times, you know. But at the moment it's just me, because you've gobbled up all the other Jersey lights on earth, and I'm the last one left, and I don't die, just like Elijah, and you've gobbled them all up, and I'm the last one left. Now, my point was, you smack me in the face with a slipper, when you go to this under cavern, oh yeah, even Jesus like, spent three days in this under cavern, even Jesus spent three days, in Sinai John is three days and three nights in this under cavern, probably because he was so, you know, pin the tail on the donkey, and they pinned every tail, every single tail on. It was a way, it was a method they had of apparent sodomistic sciences to put all the sins and corruption onto one good person who could bear the weight, as imagine like all the sin and corruption is salt and all the innocence is water. And they put all the salt into one water and boom, blew it up or something and thought this was like science or like, you know, some sort of, this is ancient shit. This is stuff that Christianity was supposed to put an end to. Supposed to put an end to that stuff. But anyway. Um, <laughs> where am I going? No memory. Just keep going for it. <laughs> um, so if you give me a lighter, spare me a lighter, you'll be spared a lighter in this under cavern. You know, in Egypt, they had this river of sticks and a lot of people got to sail down the river of sticks. That's very convenient to be able to sail down the river. There's this river that passes through this under cavern of endless torment and nightmares and horrible, horrible, un twisted justifications of your things and your lives and your values. But some people can just sail down the sticks, the river. Some people can just sail down. Now, 
Exactly, because some person gave some person deliverance. Some person delivered somebody. Some person got somebody to where they're in. How many men does it take to screw in a light bulb? They got them to. You know, Nile runs down to. Uh, Giza? <laughs> but anyway, not really. But, um, so if. This is what I was thinking. Like Dublin Bus. I always love Dublin Bus. I'm a great fan of Dublin Bus. A big, big fan of Dublin Bus. It's the hardest job in the world. It takes the absolute most precision. You can't ever fuck up. Like if uh, if you fuck up, like excuse me for swearing. Oh, you're fu like, you're pretty fucked, aren't you? If you fuck up, if you're a bus driver, um, you have to deal with the worst. Like you're not the worst, you know. It's just like every, you know, you you got to work in factory. You know, that's great. You don't have to work with the public. You got to work with the public, but you got to work in Dublin bus, man. And, yeah. Anyway, my point is, they got me, they get people home, like, they, they do a lot for the world, and it's the shittest job in the world, but it's a great recompense and reward, oh my lord, I imagine, but they got me home all the time, so they will always be delivered in the afterlife, so they might have something like a boat on the river of sticks, because they got me home, at least they got me home, so they will always have this kind of resolve to get me home, and it's weird to think of me, give me a lighter, you'll always have a lighter, smack me in the face with a slipper, you'll be smacked in the face with a slipper. <laughs> Eternally, like when you're trying to get through that under cavern, you'll just be constantly smacked in the face with a slipper. A slipper, like you know, something soft. It's the worst way to die, you know what I mean? Beating you with a slipper for like 13 years until you're dead. But anyway, <laughs> I made the mistake of saying to the psychiatric unit, because they wouldn't let me have things like shoelaces. I was like, I could kill you with a feather. I could very effectively kill you with a feather. And they took everything away. <laughs> they took everything off me. It's like, ah, oh, bollocks, I'm right backwards. But anyway, we're gonna. Yes, yeah, so I figured out. And things you name me are named onto you. So, like, if you call me queer, you have queer sperm and you have queer babies, and you'll have to learn to love your queer children where you fail to love me. And that's your opportunity of redemption. Or you say he was a retard or something, you have retarded children and you need to learn to love and give all your retarded, retarded children the opportunities you fail to give the Lord. As your opportunity of redemption, is redemption. I'm a bit sensitive about that, my uh, friends and family. I had a friend that told me to go use my Mongo bus pass. Go use my Mongo bus. I wasn't even on disability back then, but I was told to go use my Mongo bus pass. And I thought it was very funny because um, this insult was used in my uh, early, very close circle of friends. Some fucker got properly put in his place over using that word. And I always thought it was very sensitive to all my, my friends. But anyway, I got told to go use my Mongo bus pass. Um, I have my Mongo bus pass now, yes, yes, yeah, I have my Mongo bus. The IRA tried to disembowel me and a senior guard or what are they? Community shot me in the face with a handgun. In the eyeball with you. <laughs> yeah, it was painful stuff, man. I was gonna go swimming in an ocean of thorns, but I decided I'd turn back, not brevity, and face the fucker. And I just charged towards him. Anyway, and then Lana Del Rey and some giant lion and this Pegasus showed up and lots of stuff happened. Anyway, but my point is, um, yeah, so it's however you kind of treat this is why you treat royalty very well, you know, because then you might be treat, treated however well you afford them. I will not be spoiled, don't worry. <laughs> I will not be spoiled. No, I, I'll, I'll be spoiled when I have my ashram in fucking Italy. I probably um that's not a lot Francis you know what I mean that's not a lot no it is it is no that's explicitly a lot you know and the whole world will burn and die like Saddam before one one person that's not a lot is it no that is that is that was yeah that's his name yeah that's that was yeah, a lot I figured it out for you. Don't worry, I figured it out. You want to call me, as in me. Look at me. Don't look at me. 
He's everything I want my children to be. Even with semblance, because you are very good at this. Very good at semblance. I'm obviously not what you want your children to be. <laughs> obviously not. But if you call me everything you want your children to be, guess what, genius? Your children will be everything you want them to be. It's probably not a good thing. Kids are better. Like, I kick. Kids are better than the grown-ups, man. Grown-ups are the worst. I don't know. I don't understand the world. And the kids aren't lustful, uh, uh, vengeful, spike. Well, they you know, innocence and weird little things. But they're nowhere near as corrupt as the grown-ups, you know what I mean? Nowhere near. And they just don't understand. And they have no validity. They have no political validity whatsoever. You know, you could translate that shit and you could grind it down properly. But, um, I don't know, I don't know why grown-ups are in charge. They're greedy and selfish and they love money and stuff that you just don't even know about. You like toys and playing. And they just want arbitrary snake flesh. Terrible, man. Terrible. <laughs> Pedophile. Sick <laughs> uh, lit. Uh school teacher like a lovely school teacher name is Mary and uh, despite how much she loved children like a total pedophile that's what explicitly what it means Pe love of children despite how this uh, female teacher always wanted a child she had to have a hysterectomy and she was uh, like a a school teacher her whole life and probably would only have loved to have like kittens bells cockle shells and pretty maids all in a row but I had to have her hysterectomy. She's my favorite paedophile. <laughs> Lover of youth. Pederast is some gypsy that abuses children. I'm very, I'm very, I'm very, I'm very, I'm very, I'm very fucking strict on my Latin. You know, I'm very strict on my Latin. It obviously happened in England or France or somewhere. It's like, oh, are you some sort of child lover? Child lover? Are you some sort of pedophilia? Pedo Pedo's kid and filet is love. Which is hilarious, like you see in like a peep show. And you see kids like shouting at some like a uh, lad like uh, Mark. And it's Mark in the show, isn't he? And you see kids shouting at Mark. It's like, oh, look at the pedo, pedo. He's the pedo. And it's like, what's going on in the world? The Latin is so inverse. It's like, I'm the adult, you're the pedo. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> Has Latin gotten so inverse in the world that children are shouting <laughs> pedo at grown-ups? <laughs> pedo, pedo, pedo. Pederast abuses children. Or there's another one that's, that's abusing that. I don't care. <laughs> I, I, I just give the kids helmets and AKs. I just teach the kids AKs. Bit of Latin. The truth, lock the door, helmets. You know, that's how I deal with kids. That's why I won't become a teacher. You know, they won't let me be a teacher. AKs, you will. <laughs> I, do, I do sound so fucking, uh, you know, Middle Eastern. AKs for the kids. You're gonna need AK, you're gonna need a clash in the car from the truth. <laughs> because all those gypsies have symbols and reasons. Symbols and lies, symbols and reasons. And you need Kalashnikovs and the truth. <laughs> Alright, Dilly Dede, I don't know what I was talking about. <laughs>